You can't have a delivery company without a delivery person. We are the ones who risk our lives, cycling on dangerous London roads, 25, 30 jobs a day. We should be valued a little bit higher, and I think it's about time that we got ourselves at least a minimum of a London living wage. ITV are a long-term City Sprint client. They live very successfully on their ethical badge of being living wage accredited, but will happily outsource their deliveries to companies like City Sprint who are refusing to give their careers a pay rise. There's been a pay freeze in the industry, which has been led by City Sprint for 15 years. Courier wages have been suppressed by clients and courier companies for many, many years. It's been a race to pay the, the least wages and offer clients better, better deals. And uh, enough is enough. The time has come to change to pay us a bit more money. In order to um, pay for a proper room and everything, you have to be working between a 45 and 50 hour week. Some people do 55 hour weeks. Working at full tilt the whole time which is completely unsustainable. It adds up to about 50, 60 quid a day. The people earning less than that. You can only really do it really like for three or four months at a time. And then normally like people just crash and burn. Like they just, they have to take some time off. I have had time off before, but you feel like you can't take time off because you're not going to get paid for it. But then on another level, you can be replaced. You know? and, and, and so that, that keeps you there as well. <laughs> We get paid per delivery. For example, in the EC postcodes, we get two pound per delivery. You go from an EC postcode to a WC postcode, you get two pound fifty. You go from an easy postcode to Southwest One or West One, you get paid £2.90. You've got to be doing 30 or 40 deliveries a day to make all right money. When the recession came in, they needed to drop the rates so they could compete and get more, get more work, which was fair enough. Most riders accepted that. To go from EC2 to EC3 is to get paid £2.90. So it's a drop of about a third. Apparently the recession's over, or so the Tories tell us, and our rates are still pretty low. Basically, I'm making the same sort of money as I was making when I started. Anything we get supplied, we have to pay for from the company. We have to rent all our equipment, everything. We have to use proper equipment. You're out in the rain, so you gotta have to wear rainproof equipment. You gotta buy cycling gear. You gotta buy all the necessary kit you need to run around with. One of the guys I know, he has to pay uh, 750 pounds for the XDA, which is a device that sends down the job. Uh, so the thing, the equipment itself is quite expensive. Uh, but the cost is to us if we break it. City Sprint don't own a single vehicle, right? Everyone who comes there either has their own vehicle, like we own all of our own bikes, or they have to hire them. I just bought a bike. <laughs> it's just going to be installments. A thousand pounds. You need to eat properly. You need to rest properly. You need to take care a bit about yourself a bit more because you need to be able to cycle again five days a week. 10 hours a day. The stress of being tired and feeling like your work, your work rate is going down if you're not doing as many jobs an hour as you should do because you're exhausted. Normally you have to try and pack your bag full as much stuff as possible if you want to try and keep the cost low on eating but then again you're kind of counteracting that because then you have all the, you lose less space in your bag to be able to carry things. So after dark it would be like 250 and it's not really fair money for the amount of work we do and the risks we're taking. At the current rate, you need to be doing 3.28 jobs an hour, which is a really high productivity rate. There's only a few people that are doing that. There isn't the volume of work for everyone to do that. That's the way the system works. It functions on a surplus labour force. There's always a slack for when it gets busy. It's not stable. You earn a certain amount of money one week and then the next week is significantly dropped. 
So it's like a fluctuating, you can't rely on this job. So we need to make the money enough during the weeks that we are working to be able to save and cover our costs on that. And a lot of riders are finding it very difficult to do that. Frustrating, being out, standing by, not making any money, I'm being on the road with my bike waiting for a job, but I'm not making zero minus because I'm having my coffee, I'm having my food, money, and that's really, really frustrating. You're forced to sign a contract that forces you to be self-employed. It's so beneficial for them to keep 3,000 couriers self-employed. You know, they get out of um, having to pay income tax, national insurance. People a bit higher up that yeah. have never been couriers before, which mm -hmm. I think that's a big problem in City Sprint now. You go and talk to people in Fleet, they've never done this job before, whereas mm -hmm. the controllers have, mm -hmm. so they understand what it's like because they've been on the road themselves. The controllers <laughs> were enormously hard, enormously hard for looking after us you know they're the ones that are making sure that we're earning what we're earning and they have an incredibly stressful job our job is stressful but theirs is as well and they're the ones having to uh, look after 50 riders and make sure that they're making their ends meet we're supposed to be a living wage city where people receive a, a minimum that's enough to live off in the city um, and if there are workers who if they're off sick um, if they don't manage to get as many jobs as they should uh, they, they don't get a living wage, then, then that's actually, that's no good. They are not able to, to live. This is not what a civilised city should be about. <laughs> Us, the other guys have been here nine, ten years. We've seen the whole cycle go through. We know the game, so we're the ones trying to organise and make it a better, uh, a better job, a better profession for people that want to do it. I think the IWGB strategy is always excellent. They're very good at making their campaigns visible. They're recruiting allies as well, doing demonstrations, making it obvious to the wider world what's going on. Um, I think that's good for building solidarity and for putting pressure on the companies to listen and negotiate. People trying to do it for life, you know what I mean? For 15, 20 more years, it's, it, uh, in my opinion, it needs to be regulated, like, you know, to make it more fair. And the union is, in my opinion, way to get there. That would be wonderful if everyone could stop <laughs> working for an hour even. All the pushback, even just the pushback riders. And that would just create such a massive wave and effect on, on the industry. And they realize that they need us, really. They really need us. We can win. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't have any doubt. It's something that the government backs. It's something that, you know, Boris Johnson and all those other guys in government, they all back this. So it's something that actually City Sprint really, or any other career company, any of them, it shouldn't be something difficult for them to back.